In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. And our Chaplain's Report today does come from the book of Proverbs. And when you're looking at any of the wisdom literature in the Bible, it, it's kind of a short one-off kind of thing, especially in Proverbs, less so because we're a little bit later in the book. In, in the earlier books, you basically had one wise saying in a verse, and the next verse had nothing to do with the previous one. By the time you get to the later chapters of Proverbs, they're still Proverbs, and they're still written in, in poetic verse, but they're lengthened a little bit. And I like that because you get a little bit more time to think about it and really absorb what the text is saying. And these wisdom books just have so so much uh, contained within them that helps us in our daily lives. There's so much practical application in each of them, and I think that this is a good case, uh, regardless of what side you are on in this discussion. So let's look at Proverbs 26, 3-5. through 5. A whip is for the horse, a bridle for the donkey, and a rod for the back of fools. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, or you will also be like him. Answer a fool as his folly deserves, that he be not wise in his own eyes. So what is this verse saying? It's, it's saying a couple of things. First of all, it's acknowledging that there are people that act foolishly and are in need of correction. Just like a donkey needs a bridle and a horse needs a whip, sometimes human beings don't act very intelligently. And because of that, we're in need of correction. Now, the example it's giving there is corporal punishment. But as a general rule, punishment is not something that is to be seen as a negative, at least not in the context, and we're reading it right here. It's done with the intention of correction, of setting a person on the correct path. Because you don't whip a horse because you want to torture it. You whip a horse because it is acting incorrectly. You put a bridle on a donkey, not because you hate the donkey or want it to be uncomfortable, but because the donkey needs some guidance. And that's the important thing that I think it's that we should all remember, that even if we happen to be on the right, and even if we happen to be wiser than the person that we are discussing, even if we're trying to prove that somebody is incorrect, it should always be done in the same manner in which Proverbs is talking about it right here that we do so in the spirit of love and the spirit of correction. We're not trying to win an argument or just to steer them in the direction that we want them to go. We genuinely want them to do what is best for them, what is in their best interest. And I think having that attitude changes our approach in a lot of ways. We're not doing it to troll people. We're not doing it to say, you know, just to puff our chest out and say how much smarter we are than they are. We're doing it in a humble way, and we're doing it because we're saying, hey, this thing that you're engaged in, it's not right. And because it's not right, and because it's self-destructive, and because it is not good for you, I'm going to give you some information here, I'm going to give you some direction here to help you improve your own life. That changes how you think about the situation. And there's another thing that I'd like to point out here, too, that when... The Bible correctly asserts here that when you are going to answer somebody who is foolish, you have to change your direction in the way that you answer as well. It's saying don't fall into the same habits as him. If you're in an argument or a disagreement with a foolish person, don't stoop to their level. Don't give an answer the way that they expect. Answer them in a way that's going to fit where they are. I think a great example of this is the parables of Christ, or the stories where he actually interacted with people. You see, he talked to people on their level. Sometimes he ran up against foolish people, and he had to change his approach. Some people 
like the Pharisees he called a generation of vipers. That's pretty bold. And he did so because they were acting foolishly and should have known better. You'll notice when he's talking to Levi or Zacchaeus or other harlots or tax collectors, he takes a very different stance. Why? Because he gave them the information on their level in a way that they would understand it and they could accept it. He had to be a little harsher with the people that should have known better because that was the only way he was going to get some of them respond. And we always talk about Pharisees as though they all went the wrong way, as though they were a collective group that they all hated Jesus. That's not true. Paul was a Pharisee. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. There were other Pharisees that are mentioned in the Bible not by name, but as people that supported Christ. Not everybody missed it. A lot of them did. Most of them did. Enough to get Jesus crucified, but not everyone did. And so it's important for us to remember that our approach needs to be, have that ultimate goal of helping people and doing so because we care about them and we care about the direction that they're taking. And I think that the reason that the Bible is giving us this and the reason that it ends right there with, so uh, answer a fool his folly deserves that he not be wise in his own eyes. We've all been guilty of this. We have all done things where we acted foolishly and we believed that we were doing the right thing. That's a human trait. I've done it more times than I can count. You have too. And normally, the way that we realize that we weren't doing something right, sometimes we come to that revelation on our own, but usually someone had to help us. Sometimes it was somebody just lovingly taking us aside and gently saying, hey, that was not a smart move. Sometimes it takes some tough love. But either way, somebody had to inform us that we were incorrect. And that allowed us to start the journey of correcting ourselves and starting on the right path again. For that same reason, the Bible is saying that you don't just ignore a foolish person. You don't just let them waller in their own foolishness, nor do you answer them in a way that a fool would not understand. You don't just belittle them or talk down to them. You guide them. You help them up because all of us have been the fool at some point. And hopefully, we learn from that experience in a way that we're going to be able to help another person so that they will not be wise in their own eyes and be blind to their own mistakes. You see, the core of this passage is not to shout down foolish people, but to realize that a lot of the times we're the fools ourselves, and we're the ones that have to help each other if we're going to rise to the level of wisdom that the proverb author is asserting that we need to reach to, the kind of wisdom that God will be proud of in his children. Stay the course, friends. <laughs> Hey, to make sure you get all the updates, you need to go ahead and subscribe and click that little notification bell down there. That gets you a notification every time I post a new Bible lesson or political commentary. Now, I'm not saying that if you don't subscribe, it's because you hate America and Jesus, but I can't think of any other reason you wouldn't subscribe.